So today we'll uh, <coughs> talk about our uh, next lab, which is lab eight. This is actually about the first part of the lab eight. So in this part of the uh, lecture, we will talk about a small integrated circuit, which is um, known as five 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 timer. This is actually the number of the uh, IC number of the chip. So this timer has a small circuit here. So today we'll talk about the circuit. We'll talk about some of the formulas um, that uh, we use to um, make this um, chip work. Also, we use to uh, configure the circuit with this uh, timer. So this is an integrated circuit again. Uh, it's a very small IC, only like eight pins four pins in, on each side. So um, there are a couple of things that we need to have to set up the timer circuit. Now again, just by the name, as you can guess, this has something to do with the time, right? So this IC is a very simple IC, which actually generates some um, pulse in sequence. Now what is the pulse? Now in the digital circuit, um, we only care about two different signals, right? Zero and one. So the pulse means this IC actually gives you a sequence of zeros and ones, okay? So basically the signal would be just like a pulse signal. So I'm sure you might have seen it. So it will be just like uh, zero, one, zero, one, you know, flipping zeros and one in sequence, okay? Now, a lot of times actually this is quite important because think about these zeros and one. This is something like switches, right? So you are just like switching on and off and on and off in sequence, right? But, but you know, you probably cannot uh, control some of the circuit manually just by, on and on, by, by, just by turning on and off uh, with a specifically defined duration, right? So for an example, you actually can use this IC and set up a circuit based on your need. For an example, let's say you set up a circuit such that it will give you zero and one in sequence, and every zero or every one will stay for a second. You see what I'm saying? So basically, it will give you a sequence of zeros and ones, so the, but the zero will stay for one second, and for next second it will be one, for next second it will be zero, for next second it will be one. You see what I'm saying? So, there is a lot of things you actually uh, can do with this IC and the circuit, okay? Now, to build the circuit, we need two register. Those registers are called R1 and R2 in short. Uh, we also need, need a capacitor. Now, these three items, as you can see, we actually have the IC and then we also know the pins and then using the IC and pin, uh, we can actually build a circuit. But these two registers, R1 and R2 and capacitor C1, they have a big role to play because these will actually determine how your frequency will be. Like, you know, you know that the frequency will be pulse, right? But the pulse can be super frequent, like it will give you like 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1 in sequence very quickly, or it, it can give you 0, 1, 0, 1 very slowly. You know what I'm saying? Depending on your need. Now, how can you control the speed of that sequence? Just by adjusting register one, register two, and capacitor one, okay? And, and, and this is not a big thing because we just have, we, we have actually a lot of formulas. We use those formulas to set up and define those R1, R2, and C1, okay? Now, here is our first thing. So, remember I said um, this IC555, meaning this timer, gives you sequence, right, of zeros and one. So, the first question is, what is the duration? Now, how can you tell how long it would be? You can tell from, if you know the register one and capacitor one, you can use this formula. This actually tells you what will be the pulse width. Now, the pulse width means what will be the time you need to complete a, to, to, for, for a pulse. Like for an example, that means from this point to this point, how long the time would be? Is it like one second? Or is it like one millisecond? Or was one microsecond? 
And again, that depends on your register one and capacitor one. So that means if you know the register one and capacitor one and plug it into the formula, for an example here, we just plug some values like for register one, we plug like 10 kilo ohm. For the capacitor one, we plug 2.2 microfarad. And once we did the calculation, as you can see, the answer came up like 224.2 nanosecond. That means from here to here, your circuit will take like 24 nanosecond to give this duration, okay? That will be the duration of that pulse. Now again, if you want to change it, you can always change it just by changing register one and capacitor one, okay? So it's actually very simple. All you need to know the formula and use it. So a couple of other things. What will be the frequency of, of your pulse? Now what is frequency? The frequency means how frequently the pulse is actually changing or completing the cycles. Now for an example, if you can think that you know any 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 waveform, it actually repeats the same thing, right? So basically it starts from a point, if ends from a point, it actually completes the whole cycle, right? And then same cycle repeats again and again. So it doesn't matter if it's a pulse, doesn't matter if it's a triangle shape, doesn't matter if it's a sinusoidal shape. I'm sure you have seen all, all those shapes in the electric circuit class, right? But doesn't matter how, how the shape is, it actually repeats the same thing, right? But before it repeats, it actually completes the whole cycle. And then it keeps repeating the same cycle again and again. Now the frequency means how many cycles a cycle is completed in one second. Now again, it depends on the speed, right? So if you make you know, the pulses very fast, in one second, it will be a lot of cycles completing, right? If you make your pulse slow in every second, it will be very slow, depending on how you adjusted it. But again, you can just find it using the value of the register one, register two, and capacitor one. As I said, these three are the big players because these are the ones which actually determine all the speed and you know the duration, cycles, frequency of the pulses we are generating. There is a small chart here. This chart is pretty useful because this chart actually can uh, tell you what exactly you need to do for a specific frequency because a lot of times instead of just uh, plugging the resistance, meaning the R1, R2, and C1, you want to probably do a back calculation like this. Let's say you want to see, okay, I have a specific register. I want a specific frequency. What would be my uh, register one? Or what would be my value of register two? So you can do it very simply. For an example, this is like a small chart here. So let's say for an example, if you want uh, capacitor one, is C1 is like a little bit more than one farad, one microfarad. And if you want frequency, which is a little bit more than 100 hertz, then you register one plus two times register two must be 10 mega ohm. It's like a backward calculation. So that means if you want something, how much you register would be? Or how, how, how much you need as your resistance, okay? So this chart actually tells you a little bit about that. But most of the times we actually use the formulas. So all these uh, things that you can get from this chart, you can also calculate it using the formula. Is you know what I'm saying? So we also have a couple of interesting formulas because as you know, there is a capacitance, right? Now, a big part of the capacitance does this. Capacitance actually get charged and discharged, right? That's the part, that's the, that's the job of the capacitance. It's actually get charged, it get discharged. Now there are two different time associated with any capacitor. Number one, the charging time. Number two, discharging time. Very simple. So since we have one capacitance here, we uh, actually can calculate the time that the output is high, which is actually like how long it takes C1 to charge, which is expressed by TH. That means this is the charging time in simple. You can calculate the charging time by this formula. Again, in the formula, you can see we need that R1. We also need to know what is the R2. We also need to know C1, okay? Same is, we have another formula for the discharging cycle. So pretty much this is the time the, charge, the, the capacitor will take to discharge, okay? So it depends on the 
R2 and C1 because in the formula we have R2 and C1. Now, if we add these two time like charging time and discharging time that is called the total period okay so all we are just doing is just adding both of the formulas formula for the th formula for the tl then combine this becomes a new formula is actually the combination of the previous two formulas so what exactly we will do with these formulas that's probably something interesting uh, to know we actually will be using these formulas to set up the circuit. Let's say for an example, you have a 555 timer, right? And you are trying to set up a circuit where you want a very specific speed of the pulse generation. Do you know what I'm saying? Now, to set those up, you need a specific register one, specific value for register two, and a specific value for capacitor one. So how do you know it? you will be actually using this formula to know it, okay? And in this lecture, we'll also look at a couple of examples where we'll actually show you how to calculate those, okay? Before I go there, this is the pretty much the last formula that we have. We pretty much have the same formulas, but we just try to tweak and twist those formulas to do and find different things. This is called the duty cycle. We find the duty cycle by dividing TH by capital T. Now, remember, the TH is the charging cycle, charging time, right? And T is the charging plus discharging time, which is also equivalent to this formula, okay? And duty cycle always comes as a percentage. Now, let's go to the problem and see how we actually can set up this register and then uh, configure this circuit. For an example, let's say we have a circuit, okay? We have a 555 timer circuit, and but we don't know the value of the register 1 and the register 2. That means we are going to find it. But we know that we have a capacitance, or we have a capacitor, which is 2 microfarad. We know the discharging time, which is 5 millisecond. We know the charging time, which is 15 millisecond. So that means these are given, okay? And we need to find R1 and R2 for the circuit. So we'll, we will pretty much use our formulas to find all of those. Okay, now to address this problem, we first try to write what are given to us. We are given C1, right, which is the capacitance. We wrote two microfarad. Again, we just get rid of all the engineering prefixes so that we can plug this directly into the formula. So instead of that micro, we actually wrote 10 to the 1 negative 6, right? That's our micro, right? Same is for the TL and TH, because these are given in millisecond. We just put 10 to the 1 negative 3, because we just got rid of all those engineering prefixes so that we can plug it into the formula directly. Now, we need to find two different registers, R1 and R2. Now, how can I find it? Now, again, we have formulas, right? We can use the formula to find it. But before I start the formula, let me remind a very basic thing. Using any formula, how many unknown you can find? How many unknown I have here? Two unknowns, right? Because I have, I have to find R1, I have to find R2. So there are two unknowns, right? Now remember, anytime using any formula, you can find one unknown at max. That means, since you have two unknowns here, you must have to use two different formulas. We don't know the formula yet, but I'm just trying to give you the hints, okay? We must have to have two different formulas since we have two different unknowns, okay? Let's see which one we, we can do the first. Now remember, this is the formula that we just looked at a couple of slides back, right? And I also mentioned the equation number from the book. Because all the discussions we are having right now is actually from the chapter 7 of the book. So even if you don't care about the equation number, I just still mentioned it just to show you that this is from the book. Now, why I actually st I'm starting with this formula? You might be wondering why this? Because we have seen so many other formulas, right? Why this? Let's look at the formula carefully. In the formula, we have TL, right? We have R2 
right? We have C1, right? So these are the three variables we have in the formula. Now, can anyone tell out of these three variables, how many variables we already know? That means the values of how many variables we already know from the list. Look at the chart. Look at the, look at the list of the things that you, want, you already know, right? You already know TL, right? It's given, right? See? This is the TL, right? So, and you already you also know the C1, right? Which is given here. So, out of three variables, you already know two. So, the un how many unknowns you have then? Just one, right? That means you are pretty much ready to find it because the only unknown is R2 here, right? And that's why I actually started with this formula because I always want to see, want to use a formula where I, I have only one unknown. Because if I have more than one unknown, I cannot find it directly, for sure, okay? Because as I said, I can have at max one unknown. So that's why I selected this formula because I know that out of the three variables, I already know two. So the, to find the third one is easy, which is unknown here, R2, right? So we are going to find the R2 from here. Now, to find any unknown, how do we start? We first isolate the variable, right? That is unknown. So that means we are going to isolate R2, right? How can we isolate it? To isolate it, I have to divide both sides by 0.7 times C1. Why? Because I, I want to get rid of 0.7 and C1, right, from this side, so that I can get, I can get rid of 0.7 and C1, and I can only have R2 on that side. See, if I divide both sides, because see, see, whatever I'm using to divide, I have to use, I have to use that both side, right? I have to divide it both side, right? And I'm dividing that 0.7 by C1 because I just want to cancel this C1. I also want to cancel this 0 0.7 so that I'm only, I only have R2 at one side because that is the unknown we need to find, right? So whatever I need to find, I want to isolate it. So. I already isolated because my 0.7 got canceled here, my C1 got canceled, so I just have R2, okay, which I'm trying to find. Now, I actually did the same thing. I wrote it, or I wrote the same thing. I just wrote the R2 at the right side, or from the right side to left side, but that's the same thing. Now, at this point, I already isolated my R2, so all I have to do is I have to plug these values. So I have to plug TL, and I have to plug C1, which already I know, right? given, right? So I plug those from, from there, see? I plugged 5 times 10 to the negative 3, which already I know. I plugged uh, the value of C1, which is 2 times 10 to the negative 6. And the rest is, I just did simple calculations using the calculator. And then I have the value for R2, which is 3.57 kilo ohm. Now remember in pause, whenever you will be working on these problems, make sure you look at the question, because in most of the questions we mentioned, okay, f find R2 in kilo ohm, okay, or we said, okay, find R2 in mega ohm, so make sure you convert it to that, okay, so uh, in this case, we just saw, we thought probably the kilo ohm might be the best way, so we just change it to kilo, okay, but in pause, it's already mentioned in the question that you have to convert it to kilo or mega or pico or nano, you know, all those engineering prefixes. So now I know R2 already R2 from here. So how many unknowns I have right now? One more, right? Remember at the very beginning I had two unknowns. So that's why I eliminated R2 from here because I already know R1 right R2 right now. So the only thing that I need to know is R1. How can I find it? Again, using another formula. So look at my given chart. So I had actually three given uh, variables from the questions, but I added one more because I just found it, right? I just found R2 already, right? So I listed R2 also here. So the only thing that is unknown to me right now is R1. So, and remember, I have to use a separate formula to find R1. Remember I said, if you have two unknowns, you have to use two different formulas, right? So I'm just using a different formula, which is this one. Now, look at the formula carefully. How many variables I have in the formula? Four, right? I have TH, I have R1, I have R2, 
and I have C1. Now, out of these four variables, how many variables I already know? Like the values of how many variables I know? Look at my list. I already know TH, right? Which is given here, right? TH. I know R2, right? Which I just found, right, from the previous calculations. And I already know C1. So that means the only thing that is unknown to me right now is R1, which I have to find it from this equation. And just like the previous calculations, I have to isolate R1, right? Everything that I want to find, I want to isolate it. How can I isolate R1? I first divide both sides by 0.7C1 because I just want to get rid of everything on this side except R1. So I just started that process. So I, I am canceling 0.7 and I'm canceling C1. The only thing that I have right, so, right side right now is R1 plus R2. But I still need to get rid of R2 here, right? Because the only unknown I have is R1. So twice, I'm sorry, to isolate R2, the next step is I'm subtracting R2 from both sides, right? Because that's the way I can cancel R2 from the right side. Because the only thing that I need is R1 at the right side. So I canceled R2. So now I have R1 on the right side. So I'm just writing the same thing. I just I, I, I just flip the side, but that's the same thing. Now, I, I plug all the values. So I, I, I have my TH, I know my C1, I know my R2, right? Which is already given to me. So I just plugged all those values from here, right? So that's my C1 here, that's my TH, and that's my R2. I plugged all those values here. Once I plugged it, I did the calculation and I found my R1. And then I converted the R1 into kilo. Again, when you do it in pause, make sure you see how you need to convert it, right? Because in the question is mentioned, convert it to kilo, convert it to mega, right? Make sure you follow that step. So in these cases, I just did kilo because I thought kilo might be a better uh, match. So I did kilo, OK? Any question? Remember, as I said, we actually want to solve this problem so that we understand how to set up the 555 timer, right? What is the question? So for R2, we had to find it by using TL, and R1, we had to find it by using TH. These are the formulas that we already have in the previous slide. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. No, 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 that, that was a formula. Yeah. See, the formula is given in the previous slide. So because the T, the, this is the formula for TL, that's the formula for TH. So it's actually given, so you cannot change it. So we are actually using the formula from there, right? So is the question that, can you use TH instead of TL? Was that the question? So you cannot start with these, because at the beginning, if you start with these, you do not know R1 and R2 both. How can you solve it? At the very beginning, you do not know R1, you do not know R2, right? So you have two unknowns, right? Remember I said, using one formula, you can find one unknown. If you start with this formula at the beginning, you, you do not know R1, you do not know R2. How can you start? You can have at max one unknown, right? So that's why we started the formula with the TL, so that we can find the R2 first. And then we can use the R2 to find R1 here. You cannot start with this, because otherwise, you will have two unknown, and you, you will never be able to solve the problem. In one formula, using one formula, you can find at max one unknown. So that's why we actually did the other formula first, meaning the formula with the, for the TL first, to find the R2. Then once we know the R2, we plugged R2 here, because we already know C1 and TH, to find the R1. Did that answer your question? Okay. Now, you know, it depends because, you know, the next problem I'll show you is a little bit more tricky than this one, but it's still the same problem, but uh, based on the information that is given, it's a little bit different. Uh, let's see this question. So, again, pretty much a similar question, but look at what is given here. We know C1, right? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We have to find C1 and R2. But what is given to us, we are given R1, 
we are given TL and we are given TH. All right, can anyone tell which formula I should use to start with? Because I have two formula, right? One is for TH, one is for TL, right? So, let us first list what I know. So, these are the things I already know, right? So, I already know R1, I wrote it, I got rid of engineering prefix, same is for TL and TH, I got rid of the engineering prefix, I wrote those in just in raw unit. And I have to find C1, I also have to find R2, right? So, which formula I should use? Let us start with this, let us see what I know here. So, look at the formula very carefully, I already know TL, right? But do I know R2? No. Do I know C1? No. So, this is interesting. So, I do not know both of these. Can I solve it? Probably not directly. But how about using the other formula? Remember, there was a sep other formula for TH, right? So, we will probably run into the same problem because in that formula, I do not know R2, I do not know C1. So, I will run into the same problem. So, as I said before, remember this is a little bit tricky problem because in both formulas, I actually do not know two unknowns. So, you might run into this situation that no matter which formula you use, you still have two unknowns. So, you know what I am saying? No matter whether you use this one, whether you use the other one, you do not know two of the unknowns. How exactly will address this problem? So, you will start, you still start with this, this equation. Let me show you, even if you do not know two unknowns, it will still help you because you are using two different formulas, you can still solve it in a little bit in a different manner. Okay. Now, I start with this and what I am going to do is, I will still try to isolate R2 to find the value of R2. I probably cannot get it right away, but I will probably get an equation for R2. Let us see how we do it. I divide both sides by 0.7 C1, this is exactly the same steps I actually did in the last problem. Okay, And then I, I isolated R2. And then, look at what I know here. I only know TL, right? Because I do not know C1. So, I plug TL only. And I kept C1 as it is. Because I do not know the value of C1. So, I do not have any, any choice. I just left it as it is. So, this is probably the best I can do right now. Because I do not know the C1. So, you might be wondering. So, how can I find the value of R1 right now? I cannot find the value of R1 right now. All I all I am trying is, I am trying to get some value of R1, which is, I am sorry, some value of R2, which is defined in terms of C1, because I do not know the C1 right now, right? So, I have to keep it as it is, but this will help us. Let me show you how it will help. Look at here, I actually wrote my R2 equals to this. I do not know the C1, so I left it at as it is, okay? So, here, I am going to plug all the values that I know. What I know here, I know TH, I plugged it. I know R1, I plugged it. Now, I know R2 in terms of C1 that I plugged. And then, I am multiplying it by C1. Now, if you open the parenthesis here, you will be actually multiplying the both, both part of the second side, right side by C1, right? Do you see what I am saying? you will be multiplying this by C1, you will be multiplying this by C1, right? Because you, you are just distributing C1 by opening the parenthesis. So, once you do it, what happens? This point 0.7 and this point 0.7 get cancelled, right? Same is true for C1. This C1 and this C1 get cancelled. So, I just have only C1 here, but look at the, for, look at the line right now. If you look at carefully, both left side and right side, how many variables you have right now? It's only C1, right? That means, using this equation, now you can solve C1, because that's the only unknown you have in this equation. Now, think about the previous step. If you did not have the R2 defined in terms of C1, you could not come to this point. Now, using here, using this step, I am trying to find the C1. Again, how can I find the C1? I have to isolate it, right? Anything I am trying to find, I have to isolate it. How can I isolate? To isolate it, I have to get rid of everything on the right side except C1. 
how can I get rid of everything? First, I am trying to subtract this part here. See, I subtracted this part so that this 5 times 10 to the 3 and 5 times 10 to the 3 get cancelled. So, I subtracted 5 times 10 to the 3 from both sides. Once that get, I am sorry, once that cancelled, in the left side, I have 15 times 10 to the 3 minus 5 times 10 to the 3. That actually means 10 times 10 to the 3, right? 15 minus 5, which is 10. So, in the right side, I still have 0 0.7 times 2 times 10 to the 3, which I need to get rid of because I need to get rid of everything except C1, right? So, I am dividing both sides by 0 0.7 times 2 times 10 to the 3 so that 0 0.7 get cancelled, 2 get cancelled and 10 to the get 3 get cancelled, right? So, once that they get cancelled, you will le you will live with only, you will have only C1 at the right side. Now, I am just flipping the side and then I am just doing little bit of calculation here. Once I do that calculation because it is just a calculation you can do in, in calculator, you will you'll, you'll have only 7.142857 times 10 to the negative 6 farad. Now, 10 to the negative 6 is what? Micro, right? So, I just wrote it as micro. So, that is my C1. Now, I already got my C1, but I still do not know my R2, right? Remember, my R2 was defined in terms of C1, right? But I still have to find C1. How do I know? I am sorry, I found C1, but I still have to find R2. How do I find R2? It is very simple. All I have to do is, since I know R C1 right now, I will plug the C1 back here. Once I plug it, I am done. I did my R1 calculation and then it is actually very simple. It is 1000 kilo ohm, meaning 1000 ohm, which is 1 kilo ohm. So, couple of times we will probably run into such situation that no matter which formula you use, you will still have two unknowns. So, in those cases, we will actually follow this example. Okay. So, in this example, we probably have seen that we first tried to find R2, R but we could not, right? So, we'll act, we found something with the C1 and we plugged it here. Once we use it to find the C1, I plugged it back to the original equation of R2 to find the value of R2 because all I have to just do it was just to use the C1, plug it back, okay? Now, for this part of the uh, lecture, like for 555 timer, we actually will try two different quizzes. In the first quiz is mostly the basic formulas, but in the second quiz, you will probably see the problem similar to the problem 1 and problem 2, okay? So, in both problems, we try to find unknowns, right? So, and then we will be just using these formulas and follow these problems similar to these ones except, you know, everything will be similar except the numbers, okay? So, this will be the starting point for the lab 8. So, let us stop this presentation here so that we can try the quizzes and also the lab.